When it rains on campus, do you ever wonder where all that water goes? Well, when it rains on the University of Missouri-St. Louis campus, the storm water has no place to go. According to the National Clinic Data Center, St. Louis receives either rain or snow almost a third of the entire year. That's a lot of water. When it rains on UMSL's campus, the ground soaks up a lot of the water. However, when the ground is completely saturated with water, or the ground is impermeable, such as most roads, parking garages, buildings, and sidewalks, and much more, the ground can no longer soak up the rain. The leftover storm water goes into the nearest river or body of water, such as, for example, on South Campus, Engelholm Creek, without any form of filtration. This is where rain gardens come into play. They're very important because rain gardens slow down the rush of water from these hard surfaces, hold the water for a short period of time, and allow it to naturally infiltrate into the ground. After entering the ground, it's filtered and becomes groundwater. Throughout this video, we will be showing how rain gardens have been successfully implemented in other areas and how it could benefit the university and its campus as a whole. Since 1960, total water use in the U.S. has grown 52%, from 270 billion gallons per day to 408 billion gallons per day in 2000. In some parts of the country, our groundwater is being pumped out of the ground 25% faster than it is being replaced. Rainwater that would otherwise percolate down into the ground runs across surfaces such as roads, sidewalks, roofs, parking lots around Umsel's campus. The water picks up a variety of interesting things along its path. The list is long. Excess nitrogen and phosphorus from fertilizers and pesticides. Disease causing bacteria and viruses from animal waste, like geese poo. Phosphorus from leaves and grass clippings piled on the street curb. Heavy metals and other toxic contaminants from our cars and the construction equipment around campus. Eroded soil from exposed land and a variety of plastics and other little litter forming trash are all things that can be found. Where does this water go? Water flows over the ground and then into stormwater inlets, sewers, or directly to local ponds and streams. Unlike wastewater or combined sewers, stormwater sewers do not connect to wastewater treatment plants. Anything that is picked up by stormwater, including trash, pesticides, pet waste, flows over yards, streets, and parking lots, will make its way into the nearby lakes, creeks, and rivers, such as Bug Lake or Ingleholm Creek. This causes environmental hazards to animals that rely on the water, like the geese and the other animals living in the creek. According to the Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District, rain gardens are one of the best ways to help with stormwater management. Furthermore, compared to a conventional lawn, Rain gardens allow 30% more water to soak into the ground. Because rain gardens are landscaped, they add beauty to a lawn and create a habitat for birds, butterflies, and beneficial insects. Just think about it. Would you rather have this or this? We asked students from UMSL to tell us what they knew about rain gardens. We asked if they knew what a rain garden was, if they knew how it would help our campus, and if they knew why the university needed rain gardens. Right. Do you know what a rain garden is? No. But from my understanding, a rain garden is like a planted garden that is used to absorb like rain rainfall runoff for the purpose of like less pollution. Rain garden is where it takes uh, runoff water from an urban area and it will put it into like a planter where the plants live. I do not know what a rain garden is. I don't know anything about it, so I don't feel necessarily positively or negatively. No clue. 
Okay, wait. Storm. Yes, I know what a rain garden is. Do you know how rain gardens will help the environment? Um, I suppose that because the rain, the rainfall, the rainwater is being absorbed through the ground instead of being pushed through a sewage system, it would make bodies of water in the surrounding area cleaner. When it rains, they have really long roots, so it soaks up the excess water. They make less pollution, which means a better environment for us. And lastly, do you know why Umzol needs a rain garden or rain gardens? Uh, we get a lot of rain here, uh, and I think it would be beneficial to the environment to put up rain gardens. With all of the construction we have going on, maybe they would help with the roads and like erosion, and would help roads last longer once we fix them all up eventually. Possibly. I think we should have one on each campus because obviously it does good if it purifies everything and like we drink water every freaking day. Because we have dirty water and we need to have clean water. Umsel's an old campus even though the university's been here since 1963. Parts of at least the south campus go back to 1914. It has a standard sewer system in the fact that it's wastewater, um, toilets and sinks goes into the sanitary sewer, the storm water goes into the streets and then into street drains and then into the storm water system. Um, this is good news, it keeps sanitary and storm water separate, um, but when we have a big rain event it means that our creeks get this huge inrush of water from the parking garages, the roofs, the um, parking lots, and that's that's a problem. That's a problem that keeps that affects the city um, and its relationship to providing clean water for the nation. A rain garden would help make it better because rain gardens we could apply to our older parking lots, we could apply it to the water that comes off of buildings. What rain gardens do is they're a cost-effective, beautiful way to take storm water coming off of hard surfaces and help it to soak into the ground and be available for plants. It's cost-effective because um, an institution can save mowing costs, they can save some landscaping costs, they can save the costs of expensive stormwater remediation. They're beautiful because instead of having just green grass, you would have wildflowers throughout the summer. You would have interest due to the heights of the various plants. Um, and it helps get the water back into the ecosystem because instead of having the water run off into a stream, the water runs and then sinks into the ground where it's available for plants. Um, it's available as groundwater. Um, it's available to be naturally cycled rather than quickly into a stream, run off of the land, and end up in the Mississippi going downstream as polluted water. With all this talk about rain gardens, what can we do? First, let's check out one university and their use of rain gardens. When the heavy rain falls on the plains, much of the runoff from the Auburn campus finds its way to Parkerson Mill Creek and ultimately hundreds of miles away into the Gulf of Mexico. As campuses and other urban entities look for ways to better manage stormwater runoff, a team here at Auburn is using a centuries-old approach to capture rainwater and use it in a more sensitive and environmentally sustainable way. This 1,000-gallon cistern was built outside of Dudley Hall to collect the rains that fall on top of the shop building. As the cistern fills and overflows, 
The water is dispersed to an adjacent rain garden where flowering plants soak it in. The project was funded by the Auburn Facilities Management Division and brought together the expertise of the College of Architecture, Design and Construction and the Office of Sustainability. Auburn's made a real commitment to sustainability in the way we operate. And we recognize that the way we manage stormwater is key to that for all kinds of reasons. And so this little prototype project will help us demonstrate the viability of this approach. And as we demonstrate that, we're going to do more and more of this on campus. And it's going to give us the opportunity to really manage stormwater in an enlightened way. You know, we look at this project as a prototype because we really would like to replicate it. And there are already other low-impact development approaches to stormwater management on campus, but this is the first one really to go from rooftop to cistern to rain garden. It's a very successful project and we're delighted in, in what it's showing and what it pretends for the future. Although Auburn University is pretty far away, there are some rain gardens even closer to Umsel. Wayside Community Garden, for example, is located just a few minutes away from Umsel down the road. At Wayside Community Garden, you can find a rain garden. Gateway Greening, the nonprofit organization that sponsored the rain garden, has one clear goal in mind to create something beautiful, safer, more colorful neighborhoods for our children and a city that embodies our vision of sustainability and hope. It's amazing how so many people just need a, a safe, a welcoming place to go to. They need a, something productive to do with their time, building life skills, job skills, a sense of teamwork and friendship and community that comes with it. So in the process of working with plants, um, people's lives transform. If we are to follow in the footsteps of this organization, Umsel should plant rain gardens as well. Types of plants for a rain garden include arrowwood, silky dogwood, rose bay, tall sunflower, cardinal flower, blue vervian, big blue stem, and purple stemmed aster. Not only will building a few simple rain gardens save Umsel money in the long run, but it will also attract both wildlife and more students alike. In the end, we will not only be doing UMSOL a great favor, but we will also make it better for the world.